isolation is a, is isolation is a very sad part of human life, and it's it's quite extensive, uh, particularly in rural areas. It can of course be in urban areas as well, and uh, people are cut off from maybe family, friends, callers. Samaritans get calls from people of all ages and all walks of life, but a lot of our callers uh, would be um, elderly people, uh, possibly living on their own, um, with very few visitors. So in the course of the day, uh, the only voice that they may hear could be the voice of a Samaritan volunteer at the other end of the phone. So this, this is you know, difficult, obviously, for them. And all of this can lead to feelings of dis despair, distress, terrible loneliness, possibly feelings of suicide and maybe wanting to end their life. What about the main barrier, barrier most people face when they get older is they have lack of mobility. Lack of mobility in the sense that they can't move as quick as they used to be. They can't, they're not as powerful in movement as they used to be. Lack of mobility in the sense that they might not be able to drive anymore. They might not be able to take their bike downtown they used to, like they used to do. If, you, if you're not mobile, you can feel very, very isolated because you can't get out of the situation you're in most of the time and you're kind of stuck in, the, in that rut of staying in your house or whatever. You can't go and visit the shops to buy your bits and pieces that you need to buy. You might be going, to, just even the trip of going downtown, you meet somebody and that alleviates some of the isolation. It's another uh, way of isolating yourself or a reason for it would be finance. They don't have enough money to pay for the bus or to go to the pictures or to go downtown to buy something. You're not going to leave the house, you know. And friendships as well is another part of, of, of isolation. I mean, when you get older, chances are that a lot of your friends are dying off, they're moving away, they're changing jobs, they're not in the same place as they used to be. People are changing all the time. You say, like, if your neighbour was the same age as you, 60, 70 years of age, they might have to go to a nursing home, they might go and live with one of their daughters or whatever. So you are isolated then as well, and all your friends just seem to disappear all the way along the way. Isolated elderly people uh, can, uh, because of their isolation, they grow, sometimes they're in a cocoon and don't open their doors to the community. Um, amongst elderly people in particular, there's a great sense of place, um, that this is my home. Um, they are of sometimes of the view, well, I won't open the door at all, because they fear that no matter who's outside the door, even the postman, that um, because of the way they have been uh, cocooned within, within the home for fear of attack, for fear of being assaulted or their valuables being taken, they prefer either to part the curtains, look out through a corner and remain all day, every day. But I certainly think there's a fear of, of, of people being being of having people being empowering themselves to report isolation because they have, there's an old old fear in Ireland about being put into a home. It's a famous thing about in inverted commas put into a home. And people you know, I've met people who have who are older and they're living on their own and they expect that they can keep their house in the same shape it was in when they were younger and they can eat the same way they did when they were younger and money wise or whatever, they mightn't be doing that. And sometimes they're afraid to invite people into their houses because they mightn't be eating properly, the house mightn't be as clean as it used to be. And they might have this idea that, oh, well, somebody will report me to something and they have a fear that by leaving strangers or people that are not very well acquainted into their home that this could reflect on them and their pride. And pride is a very big thing for all of us, obviously, whether we're young or old. But especially when in the elderly, oh, you often hear people saying like, all I've left is my pride. And sometimes that's all that people have left. They have very little money, very, very poor housing, living in their own, and all they have is their pride. And the only way they can preserve that is by staying indoors and not allowing people into their house. Yes, this lady came to us for help and um we made contact with her and uh, we called her the house to her. Now she was um, 
a nice, very nice person, but the first thing we noticed when we went directly that she had about four layers of, of, of clothing on her. And then when we uh, spoke to her, we found she had no heat. And then uh, she said that there was a lot of drafts coming in. And when we checked that again, we found that there was a, a gap in the wall that you could walk through with the result that the porch in her house was ready to fall down. And she had nothing to eat. Now her, her family had gone away. Uh, she was isolated. And she was isolated in town. Now she wasn't in a, a, a rural area, she was in an, an urban area. Uh, but she had completely nothing. She was lonely, isolated and destitute. And when we called back to that lady, she would not uh, entertain us because of the neighbours, of what they would say, of what they would think about them. On entering a home where, uh, where the occupant feels a sense of isolation or hopelessness, it is very evident, both from entering the house, you will see there might be three, four, five locks on the door, and you will notice that uh, windows, while you have home security, windows are uh, boarded up. Uh, there's papers across them. There may be blinds pulled all the time. But the obvious one is the demeanour of the person themselves. There's a, there's a hesitancy in the voice. Uh, there's an obvious sense of hopelessness and fear when they're talking to you. And uh, it's quite evident when you take what you find in front of you, plus when you look around you in the home itself. Very often, again, it's untidy because they just will, they will tell you, look, I'm just waiting for uh, the day when the Lord calls me. And you look around you and you say, yeah, that's quite true. You have two types of isolation. You have people that don't want to get out there and you have people that need to get out there. Now, two types of this. It's the man that just wanted to communicate with no one, or the woman that wanted to communicate with no one. What do you do there? The barrier you have to break down is first get into your house, get them to trust you. The big thing is trust. But a man is more vulnerable than a woman. Why? Because a man is pride. He's a man, his pride comes at him. A woman will get out and talk to people. They talk more, they communicate more than men. So men are more isolated at the moment. I, I had an experience with um, an elderly couple or an active, that were involved in active retired in Neighbourhood Watch and they were very close and they were very, um, I suppose, active in their community. But the wife in, in, in the relationship got ill and died and the husband then, he got very depressed and he started to isolate and I suppose he kind of got into that state where he felt that life wasn't worth living kind of thing because the biggest part of his life was kind of gone. Uh, he felt at the time, you know, and um, I suppose he went into a depression and it was a kind of a traumatic thing as well for him, the loss. And through his grief then he, he got help. And um, I suppose the important thing for him was that having contact with his doctor, with the community guard, with his own family and then the active retire part of that group he was involved in kind of came around him a bit and helped him to get through all that and that he kind of got his life back together and he's back in again now and he's, he's kind of just has adapted to the change in, in his life and is enjoying life again. Um, what we find is people who have um, become involved in the local community, there are great health benefits to it. They stay out of nursing homes, they stay away from hospitals longer than those who are isolated. The morale has a knock-on effect on their general health, their physical well-being, um, and the life of the community itself. So that's why the health board and the health service um, invests in building up local communities and building up the, the resources so that people can join in activities in the local community. The effects of isolation are varied. Uh, people can suffer from depression. 
they can get very easily tied up in their own world and prefer to stay at home rather than go out or meet anybody else. Uh, that, that is where the, the interaction with other people has to come in and actually tell those people who are down on themselves or whatever that there are services out there and those services are available to everybody. The only way we're going to solve our problem is people communicating about the elderly people. They are vulnerable, they are the most vulnerable people now in our society. So what we have to do, and this is the most basic thing, we have to make sure that people are vulnerable no more, that people are isolated no more. And the only way we do that is communication.